Welcome back to another segment of Behind the Scenes of The Waltons. Today, I'm going to be talking about the episode from season three, The Marathon, where John Boy spends numerous days dancing with Daisy in order to win prize money. Most of the episode takes place at this dance hall where John Boy and Daisy have entered this dance competition. He originally meets Daisy when he goes into just, you know, kind of a, a regular little, little store to get some, some supplies for school. He has a week off from school, so he gets intrigued about this dance competition and, you know, thinks Daisy's cute, so he agrees to sign up, not really knowing what he's getting himself into. Mama is not happy about this at all. She thinks it's, you know, it, it's just low class and, you know, that he's be making a spectacle of himself and she's not at all comfortable with this activity. But he's like, I promised I'm going. Um, our daddy doesn't seem to feel the same way. He thinks, you know, he's now 18 and he can make his own decisions. I had a fun subplot piece in this episode, uh, along with Ben, who's building a sort of crystal radio set. Um, and the rest of the kids are helping him with that. Um, and ultimately we're able to listen to a bit of the radio broadcast of the dance marathon. But there's a point where I've talked about, I think that, you know, I'm not crazy about heights. This was probably one of the, you know, most intimidating things I had to do was when I had to be up on the roof of the house. So up on the second story of the Walton house set on the back lot, walking down the roof and then leaning over the side to drop a wire down to the window that's supposed to go into the boy's bedroom. So that was, that did not make me real comfortable, but I think I managed to make it look like it was no big deal, which for Mary Ellen, it probably was no big deal. Our director, Ralph Sinansky, uh, did a whole blog on his, um, on his website about directing this episode and experiences he had. And so uh, he said, I was uh, welcome to share it with you. So I'm going to share a lot of that. And I really appreciate it. If you haven't read Ralph's blog. He talks about all the various different shows he has directed over the years, so well worth a read. I'll put the link into um, the section below here and you can check it out. So he shared that um, our producer, uh, Robert Jacks, who was our producer over the first few uh, seasons of The Waltons, that he at one point had screened for Ralph the movie They Shoot Horses, Don't They? and had talked about how he had an interest in trying to get the rights for that novel and wasn't able to. But um, at the subsequent season, when uh, Ralph was uh, invited to direct another show and he was handed the script for the marathon, he realized that it was the Walton's version of They Shoot Horses, Don't They?, which you know revolves around a, a dance marathon. And the fact that it's equally uh, about the depression in the 1930s in a town. So Ralph saw the parallels between these two stories. As a 10 year old growing up in Mason City, Iowa, Ralph said that his family would on Friday nights, he would go with his parents to the local armory where they had these dance marathons. And he said they did go on and on for days and days, weeks even, because they, uh, they raised money. You know, the more people got involved with the people who were involved, the people dancing, the more they would spend. And so it was a real money maker during the depression. So he was able to bring a lot of that knowledge to his perspective as a director on it. Uh, specifically, one of the things that Ralph Sinensky said about this episode that struck me was what I especially admired about Nigel's script, that's Nigel McKeon who wrote this script for the marathon, uh, was the way it didn't treat John Boyce entering the marathon merely as an adventure, a youthful escapade it broadened it into a drama about a mother's having to accept her son's growing up. I remember reading a review of this production when it aired that commented on John Boy's rebellion, that it was unusual, but nice to see this darker tone in the series. I agree, it was one of the first times I really saw John Boy argue with his mother about something she didn't want him to do and showed that he was growing up. And then everything he went through in the experience of this week long dance marathon. And as you saw the toll that it took on all of the dancers, you know, he looked disheveled as it went on. They hadn't really slept. They were tired, they were dirty. They were 
physically and emotionally drained by the experience. And it really gave that sense of the desperation of the times. As far as dealing with the actual physical locations of doing this dance hall, uh, the set uh, for this episode, our art director, Ed Graves, uh, because TVs worked on a tight budget, much tighter than films, uh, he designed a set where there were no walls and he hung this large black cyclorama curtain that was used to create sort of the boundaries of the set. And then within that, he erected set pieces, the bandstand and the bleachers and arches and things like that, which then, um, and I, you know, because creating all the physical structure would have cost much more. Evidently in real life, many of the people who participated in these dance marathons had been former vaudevillians. Uh, and that aspect was represented in our script through the characters of Spanky and Helen, played by Lenny Weinrib and Joyce Jameson, who actually did have a history in vaudeville for real. And Ralph said he had worked with Lenny on a production in the past and that uh, he'd seen the two of them do these Billy Barnes reviews in the Hollywood area, which I guess were musical reviews back in the day. Lenny and Joyce ended up doing a lot of their own choreography, which uh, they did very well and was really highlighted in some of these little spotlighted dance uh, segments that the two did during the marathon, which was designed to uh, get the audience really engaged and behind their, um, them as a dance couple, and then people would throw money onto the, the, the floor for them if they liked what they were doing so and they were shared that if if sponsors uh really latched onto a particular couple it could mean free things for the couple so uh spanky and helen were constantly trying to bring positive attention to them as a couple uh, but they did do in real life a lot of their own choreography as did richard and Deirdre, Deirdre Lenahan, who played Daisy. And of course, with Richard having had both of his parents were dancers, he came by this from early childhood, his ability to dance. And again, he just, he looks very comfortable on the dance floor and has a real style and flair to what he's doing, which I always noticed about Richard. I'm gonna share with you what Ralph spoke about in one of the key sequences. He said a large part of the pre-production day on the recording stage was spent recording the music for our Jackrabbit run, an elimination dance that was another contribution out of my memory of the past. I selected California Here I Come as the music to be played, and we recorded it in several increasingly fast tempos. Incidentally, in Mason City, the elimination run was staged every night. That was the major way of eliminating contestants. We spent at least a half full half day doing this sequence with two cameras. We photographed the runners in the increasingly fast tempos. For each tempo of music, there was a wide master angle, an angle on John Boyne Daisy, one on Spanky and Helen, another on Steve and PM, one on the master of ceremonies and one on Fred, his assistant on the floor. And we ran at least five, four or five minute runs for each two camera setup. So that was a lot of film for that one sequence. But as I watched the way it developed, there was a great deal of tension in the building of it and it and it was edited brilliantly and it created this real sense of eerie creepiness and desperation that ultimately culminated in Spanky's collapse and the elimination of Spanky and Helen from the competition. And I found watching that, that, you know, I was just like right in there with it and horrified by what these people went through and that desperation I spoke of, of, you know, what they went through to try and get this money. Ultimately, John Boy decides that he can't see a reason to really continue on with this dance marathon. Um, although Daisy says she can't quit uh, she's able to team up with another dancer whose wife had to drop out, but John Boy, he's had enough. And when mom and daddy come to visit him, he decides it's time to just go back with them. Uh, we never do hear in this episode the outcome for Daisy, but I'd like to think that 
perhaps she stuck it out in one. Another unusual set of good nights for this episode where it's actually the morning and they're John Boy is back, he's trying to sleep in, and we have a series of good nights and good mornings uh, in the daylight. So the only time I remember us not having a good night sequence where you see the lights go out in the house, but rather it's broad daylight. Not only was this a favorite episode of Ralph Sinensky's, but he said that he heard our producer, Bob Jacks, of the 91 episodes that he produced for the Waltons the marathon was his favorite. I want to thank Ralph Sinensky once again for sharing his information of the filming of the episode, The Marathon. That's what I have for you for this segment of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons. I will be back with more Behind the Scenes and more Ask Judy. Thanks for watching.